Up until now, our robot has been pretty dumb. It's entertaining, but it's dumb. It, it knows how to drive around, it knows how to display things and make sounds and make its lights flash, but it's pretty unaware of its surroundings. Well, we're about to change that. So we'll go into the flow control box, and we've seen the loop before. We'll go ahead and drag the loop up there. And we've seen weight before, but only in its most basic um, context. So up until now, the weights that we've been using have just been for time. In this case, it waits for one second. But if you click on this, you'll see a lot of different things you can wait for. You can wait for all the different sensors, and you know you can just go wild here. We're going to choose the most basic of those sensors, which is the touch sensor. So whenever you select the sensor, it gives you an option of comparing or changing, or, or waiting for a change. In the case of a touch sensor, the change doesn't really make a heck of a lot of sense. It's just waiting for the state of the button to change. If it's not pushed, it's going to wait for it to be pushed. Or if it's pushed, it's going to wait for it to be not pushed. Um, usually, I'd say 99% of the time, you'll, you'll use compare on touch sensors. But this change option is very handy for other sensors, as we'll see later. And we're going to compare state. So, what's all the state business? Well, that's what this first parameter is about. If you click on it, you'll see that you've got three choices. The first one is released. It's going to stop the program in this block, and it's going to wait for the button to not be pushed. The next one is wait for it to be pushed. The only one that's weird is wait for it to be bumped. Bumped means that something has pressed and then released the button. Um, it's a common mistake to use this in your program for robots uh, that's just driving around on the floor. Because, you know, you'll say to yourself, gee, I want to wait till it gets bumped. Well, bumped is probably not going to work so well, though, because the robot's going to hit the wall, keep running, pushing the button. The button will never get released, and hence it'll never say that it's been bumped. So probably um, you know, three quarters of the time, you're going to wait for something to be pressed. So we're going to say, say that for right now. We'll ignore this, this last terminal. That's used for very advanced programming uh, later on when you want to get the value out of this sensor and use it someplace else. So now we have a loop that just spins around waiting for a button to be pushed. That's kind of silly and into itself. And so let's have it do something. So I'll grab a sound. We'll have it play a tone. So now, whenever the button is pushed, it's going to play this tone. And when it's not pushed, the program is going to stall, and it's going to wait inside this block, being very single-minded about it, until that button gets pushed. And then it's going to do this over and over and over again. So, for the exercise that we're about to do, though, we want to do things with motors. And I think you know how to do most things, but... Let's talk about one of the more common mistakes. So I drug up the move steering block that we've used before. And by default, it goes forward for one rotation. See, so we're on rotations and it's set to one. Well, if we were to run this program, what's going to happen is it's going to go forward for one rotation. And then the robot's going to stop and it's going to wait for the button to be pushed. Then when the button's pushed, let's say we want to do something out here. Maybe we'll turn. So that's going to be somewhat mysterious when we run it because this block is going to go forward for one rotation and then the robot's going to stop and then it'll just sit there forever until somebody happens to come up out of uh, complete frustration and hits the touch sensor. Then it'll go ahead and do the turn and then go around. So the only trick is to know to change the mode of this motor. Um, take it off of its standard, which is on for rotation, and just make it on. When it's, when it's set to on, it'll turn on the motor for whatever direction you told it to turn. In this case, we're going straight. And for whatever power. But then it's going to go on to the next block with the motor still running. And then we're going to wait for something to uh, press the touch sensor. And then we're going to turn. So your job in the next exercise is to write a program somewhat similar to this that uh, goes forward when it hits something, it backs up, 
and then turns, maybe it can beep or something, uh, and then goes on about its business until it hits something again.